Hey everyone, I'm here with the Dragon Master himself, Mr. Brian Kibler, and uh, you've enjoyed some really special games on the desk this week, so uh, I want to know what stood out to you most so far. I mean, that, that moment just now from, uh, from Jab, with that game, from uh, Plaza to beat Plaza to beat. That's right, right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, 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 was, he was able to you know, pull out what looked to be uh, an unwinnable game with that fireball draw, which is you know, just deja vu from the America's Championship. Right, we saw we saw some, I don't want to call them greedy plays, but they're plays that put a lot on the line in the name of victory and uh, sometimes pay off not so often here at the BlizzCon World Championship. Yeah, it was pretty clear that No Tomorrow was living for today, and uh, Jab was one who was rewarded from that. Well, we have, uh, we have Life Coach coming up next, and his opponent uh, is a little less known than Life Coach. Life Coach is a player that puts a lot of his plays out there, a lot of his strategies, a lot of his thought processes. How do you think this is going to affect his opponent? I mean, Life Coach is a player who he, he really uh, appreciates the community around Hearthstone. He, he likes to educate everyone else with his stream and uh, you know, walking everyone through his thought processes. Uh, but he is just such a strong player that that really hasn't affected his results. Fantastic. Well, we'll see how his results play out in this next match. I'm going to hand it back to our casters. Life Coach versus Nias! Welcome back, everybody, to the Hearthstone World Championships Day number two. It's time to find out who will be going home between Life Coach and Nias, and who will stay alive to fight for a runner up spot. In Group B. My name is Froden. I'm joined by Savit from Team Liquid and Robert Wing, community manager from the Blizzard Entertainment of Over Hearthstone. Uh, we are getting ready for our second person. We're going to be packing their bags and returning them back to where they came from. Uh, this is a kind of a sad moment, but also a really intense moment if you think about it, because these guys uh, specifically have trained very hard to get here, but there's also you know players here that we don't necessarily expect to be in that spot so early. Um, life coach losing in the first match, is that something that you anticipated, Savits? No, not at all. Life coach is definitely one of the European fan favorites, and I don't think many of the viewers back at home expected to see him on the rope so early in the tournament. Well, I mean, maybe they expected him on the rope in some capacities, but maybe not in certainly this one. Robert, what do you have to say about that pun? Uh, 7 out of 10. <laughs> okay. I feel like if he'd had more time, could have been 8 out of yeah. 10. You're anticipating about the volleyball opinion, but I would like to get your commentary on that comedy as well. Um, but you know, again, this is a, a very tense situation. Whoever loses his best of five does have to stop here. And another handshake between these two players, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a moment of respect. You can certainly know that Nias, um, he feels like life coach is both, uh, you know, the more, the, the more honorable and more accomplished player, but that doesn't make him back down at all. I got a chance to talk with him right before the series and he, he's feeling pretty good. Yeah, Nias, uh, obviously, as we mentioned over the course of today, uh, you know, he, he really kind of showed his stuff at the America's Regional Championship, and uh, he's not intimidated. He just doesn't really feel intimidated by anybody. I think he comes into this with a little bit of, uh, of a different attitude than most players. Uh, he's not even sure that, you know, competitive Hearthstone is what he wants to do in the long term. He's just, he kind of found his way here. He played really hard. He's played very intelligently, and, you know, he's made a name for himself already. So, uh, for him, this is just kind of another day at the office. Uh, Life Coach is very similar. They're ver two very zen individuals. They don't really seem to get very ragey at all. So I'm uh, very excited to see this kind of clash of the titans. Yeah, Life Coach, on the other hand, is known for uh, really preparing for every single tournament. Before the European finals, he said that they practice with ties something like 10 hours every day yeah. for a week. Yeah, and, and Life Coach's house in Venice. It was very nice. In fact, I was a little jealous when they told me that. Life Coach has put a lot of preparation into this event, you know, for sure. And I'm, I don't really don't know if it's ended up paying off because his strategy, if you look at it, uh, yeah. you know, we can look at the classes right here. He's got Warrior, Warlock, and Druid. And a lot of people, even though we haven't seen the Warlock being played, we can anticipate it being Handlock because that's something that Life Coach has said that he doesn't really play Zoo. And if so, and if so is that strategy going to work out? Because I think he would be the only player to bring that Warlock deck specifically to this tournament. I think it's a huge liability if it is a handlock, like it, it most likely will be. Looking at Nias' lineup, Druid, Hunter, and uh, Tempo Mage. Uh, no, Freeze Mage. Mage. Well, Freeze Mage still. 
all of those are quite good against the handlock. Mm -hmm. Unless you specifically tech against that freeze mage, uh, which also could be a dangerous thing as well. And that's what Nias has been targeting. He says, you know what? He has Control Warrior. Uh, he has Druid. Things are good against my freeze mage. But if I can take care of that handlock, I'll be in a good spot. And this will be potentially one matchup that will be huge for Life Coach if he can win. If he gets his handlock past the Hunter, then he would be in a good spot. We're going to begin things off. Nias going first. Life Coach on the coin, having a couple of early game threats as well as a mixture of heals to bounce back from any pressure of the Hunter. Yeah, that's quite a bit of healing, but uh, is it something that you want this early on? I'm not sure, at least the heal, but mm -hmm. he might throw it back because Nias is playing uh, the high main version right. of Hunter. One thing to note too is that he, since he's on coin, Erdary Farseer can come out on curve as well. Yeah, not too bad, uh, yeah. getting that life back that you probably have lost on the on the turn turn two by the life tap and potential attack from the early minions of the Hunter. Mm -hmm. I like the inclusion of Earthen Ring Farseer too, because I think that was a lot more common in older versions of handlock, but it's something we really haven't seen much in, in kind of the age of the demon handlock, which obviously relies on kind of those big swing turns off of Void Collar. And while one's four and the other's three mana respectively, it, it is something that appears to have been cut to make room for all the demons. So uh, Earthen Ring Farseer obviously gives you not only a 3-3 three, three body on the board to contest early minions, gives you that little bit of healing. And Job honestly, done. for face decks or more aggressive decks in general, stuff like Zoo and, and Face Hunter, it comes down to just points of damage deciding the game, so that could end up being huge. Yeah, but we see the Malgan is here, so Life Coach is playing that demon variant of the handlock, so there should be some Void Callers in there as well, and if he can pick up the Void Caller, get the Malgan is out early, that should be huge. Yeah, because the immunity basically renders the hero power completely useless, and uh, all damage has to go through it. We do see that Nice did have an Iron Beak Owl in that deck, he's going to be relying upon it in order to get some uh, opportunity to go past things like the Malganus, but if you bait it out early, then there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Yeah, and we saw Nias' uh, Hunter deck earlier. It has the double Arcane Golem. It does obviously have Savannah High Main. So it's it's like a hybrid Hunter deck uh, with a couple of differences based on his personal references. Uh, I, I would have to imagine, now Midrange Hunter has traditionally been very favored against Handlock uh, for a long time now. Face Hunter also, uh, it either gets to the point where it gets to the Molten Giant walls and kind of crumbles, or it just obviously runs them over. Hybrid Hunter, in my experience, is a little bit more, it can go either way, depending on, you know, again, the Molten Giants are huge, and then whether or not you have to play the Arcane Golems early on curve, as opposed to use them as finishers, because mm. Handlock is another deck you just don't want to give mana to. Right. Based on this matchup, Nias definitely with the edge, but that hero power on turn three, not what he wants to do. Weak. Extremely weak. And looking at his hand, he doesn't even have a play for turn four. Yeah, uh, he, I mean, he does have maybe the quick shot. quick shot to usually answer whatever comes out. Like if uh, Farseer came out, for example, that he'd be able to use quick shot effectively. But Life Coach is also, you know, thinking about what's the merits of coining out a Twilight Drake because my opponent did just miss a, a spot. Like, can I use Twilight Drake to kill minions ahead of the curve, right, and have an advantage there? But yeah, the quick shot, like, it doesn't feel all that great to use it okay. on, a, on a, anything else but the face, because but you know that once the Molten Giants come down and get taunted, you would, you would love to have a lot of direct damage in your hand to be able to close out the game. Yeah, we actually, I mentioned the Arcane Golem, and he chose, obviously, to skip playing that because mana is so important to the, the handlock player. And, you know, Life Coach's hand is actually pretty stacked with threats. Oh, that's Whoa. a huge draw that for is, Life Coach. Yeah, exactly. What he'd want. I mean, he can play the Mountain Giant. Is there any merit at all to possibly just playing down the Mountain Giant? Obviously, the Mad Scientist is down there, so you'd expect a Freezing Trap to come out, but you have the Farseer. He well, there's two things about it. The first is, I believe, um, so you know, he doesn't have any taunt minions in his hand. So Mountain Giant effectively is no different than just, like, eight damage pressure, which is not going to win you the game immediately. Usually, you want to put Mountain Giant and then taunt it, and then hit the deal with it. So that's one argument against it. The second is... Um, uh, you know, the Void Caller is better now than, than so later, because then you can pull out the demons that have higher impact as the game goes, and you don't want to be caught in a situation where, like, you draw other demons that you don't want to go out your hand Personally, I, I, would, I would lean towards the Void Caller, just because if, even if it gets silenced, you'll still have a decent body on the board, but certainly Mountain Giant, pretty damn strong. Having that 8-8 out so early, if there's no Hunter's Mark, it's going to deal a lot of damage. Eventually, you have to kill the Hunter anyway. It's funny because of the handlock player, you usually just want to have one four drop thread that you can rely on. He had some, <laughs> I mean, he had the Void Collar, he had the Twilight Drake, he had the Mountain Giant. He kind of had a, a wealth of options there. And uh, handlock, you know, we mentioned uh, this is not a deck that's being brought a lot to this tournament because it primarily existed in most players' oh, rosters as a means to counter uh, the Grim Patron Warrior archetype. And since that's less common, uh, handlock really doesn't line up well against a lot of the more 
or a lot of the other aggressive decks. Hunters, a lot of times mid range hunter, the handlock can struggle. Secret Paladin just struggles enormously. Uh, and then if you put up against like Freeze Mage or Control Warrior, yes, it can win, but it doesn't necessarily have like the really impressive matchup that you want in your roster. All right, Life God's still looking for that taunt, giving minion either Sun Fury Protector or Defender of Argus, and he wants to find it fast. Mm -hmm. He has some options here. He could just go for the heal, but that kind of forces Nyas to deal with that so that the, it does not get freezing trapped. Right. The problem with the heal bot is that if it bounces back, uh, you get that heal again, so Nyas would want to kill it. Unless he felt yeah, comfortable exactly. leaving it, but then you isolate the Mountain Giant again. The other option um, for Life Coach is to develop yet other minions on the board. I don't even know how much merit there is to Doom Guard to try to activate I was it. Just thinking of that, I don't think it would be horrible, but I mean, you might discard something that's very important to you, like the Malaganis. Right. I think Malganis and Heelbot are the two ones that you would. I mean, Molten Giant does kind of stink, but you already do have giants out anyways. Yep. He opts for the Twilight Drake here. He's building up a pretty impressive board. He does not put the Mountain Giant into the Freezing Trap. He's just gonna hold for now. This is gonna let Nias continue to put the pressure on, and he can just put down a high main here if he wants to. Although, uh, you know, it's not as if Life Coach is without a board, he's just without taunts at the moment. Right, exactly. Still needs to find that way to deal with the freezing trap, and it's not easy at all. The, the, no, the, the interesting thing is that the high main is supposed to represent the most damage possible, which is ultimately what Hunter wants, because as the game progresses, handlock becomes increasingly favored. The other additional problem is that he can't actually isolate threats this turn. So no matter what, that freezing trap will get activated. I like this play from Nias though. He realizes at least one of those minions is probably going to end up back in Life Coach's hand. But there's Whoa. the taunt. And that it's is... on curve for the mana. Wow. He has the access to the coin, which gives him availability of playing, you know, whatever he wants and being able to access Sun Fury. That is exactly the card that Life Coach wanted to see. With that Sun Fury, he will also be able to drop the Void Caller in there, which, which would have not been possible if that taunt was Defender of Argus instead. So that that's an interesting point now. So you could Void Caller and then taunt that up, or you could play as on like a Molten right. Giant, which is just technically a bigger wall. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally like the Void Caller because it's a quicker way to get to your Doom Guard or Malganus, but I also respect the merit of the Molten Giant. Again, eight toughness, mm -hmm. which is so hard to get through. And we look at Nice's board, he has a 5-5 five, five and a 6-5 respectively. So uh, what are you guys thinking? Uh, it's, it's really tricky because of that freezing trap. If, he, if the freezing trap wasn't existing, you could tap into the Lothab Moto Coil and then, you know, go for this Void Caller play. But I just think Void Caller and Sun Fury is, is fine. He chooses not to taunt the, the Void Caller here. He wants to have no, the biggest nice. possible taunt, not that 3-4. Right. Mm. He, can, he can get rid of the Void Caller on his turn if he wants to and sacrifice it for something like a Doomguard or Malganus, so. though. I think this was a pretty important draw. The Beast Sergeant allows a really easy trade on whatever he wants, um, most likely on the Mountain Giant to reduce the most damage. But he also oh, yeah. could keep the um, the high main alive. <laughs> Helps a lot with the trades. Is there a way he can get rid of everything except one minion off the board? Or let's see. He yeah, I'm the... trying to calculate a way of like if he attack with Glaive Zuka, reattach another Glaive Zuka, and then like abusive whatever doesn't and gets the right trades. But I think it's a little messy yeah. if he does it. But he, he, can, he can do it. He can abusive unleash quick shot and only leaving up the void oh, caller. Mm -hmm. So it, it is doable. Four uh, four hounds off unleash the hounds is pretty good value in this matchup too. So that's, oh uh, yeah, sure. It's worth noting. Usually you're not going to get anything more than like one or two. Definitely happy with four, but no Hunter's Mark, no Iron Big Owl. He has to deal a lot of damage to take out this Taunt Minions. Right, we actually, uh, I don't think we've seen any Hunter's Marks in uh, his deck, which I think is the first uh, Hunter deck we've seen in this tournament that isn't running Hunter's Mark. So a lot of other players have made that read. Right, considering the type of deck that he is, he wants to be flexible to be more aggressive, so that ends up being the case where he doesn't want to necessarily spend time uh, right. or cards. He wants to be able to either control the board or like with some wow. early maintenance curves or do damage. The second mortal coil is, is huge, especially in light of the fact that Life Coach doesn't have a Hellfire. He doesn't have a Shadow Flame. Yeah, another great draw. Shadow Flame obviously would have also been incredible. He could just Shadow Flame off the Void Caller, getting the either Doom God or Malaganis, but with those double mortal coils and the heal, but he's going to have a quite a quite a good board state. Oh happen. wow, a Siphon Soul too. So that's another card. Huh. Life Coach's uh, handlock is a little bit of a uh, retro oh. fitted. Jaraxxus, it's kind of double-edged, this well, sword here. I think it's okay, because Jaraxxus, you're getting to the point where you can play it from the hand, and then play whatever Void Caller benefits off of. And also, Jaraxxus is a heal. In fact, Life Coach has three heals. He's got 
Draxus, Siphon, and the far left card, which is the, the TKO bot. Not to mention, you still has Mulganus as an opportunity just to play on turn nine. And he has like, a coin, so realistically, he can yeah. just do all this next turn. We think about playing down heal bot just now, just passing, waiting until you get to that turn eight, or use the coin to go to turn nine. Yeah, he, oh, he has to do it. If he plays the Molten Giant, he actually loses the game because there's already six power. Right. Oh, I can call him quick shot hero power would finish the game. Yeah. He knows too. Plus, yep. this is, uh, a, again, another incentive like, look, I have a heal bot. And this is a freezing trap, right? So kill the heal bot. So it's gaining 11 life, maybe even more, because he has to overkill the heal bot by a little bit of damage. Right. 12 heal on a five mana minion that puts a 3-3 three, three out. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. And I mean, this is this is the strength of Handlock, is the ability to just keep fluctuating health, draw a bunch of cards, look for the tools you need. And you know, what's impressive to me is that Life Coach hasn't really been dependent on a Shadow Flame or a Hellfire thus far. He's been able to navigate the board, get rid of the minions, without ever dealing with this uh, freezing trap. Yep, so. He was strong. He got that taunt kind of late, but it was still a good enough. Earthen Ring Farsi, or, uh, the more I, I think about the beginning of the game, I think Earthen Ring Farsi was a really huge draw and, oh, uh, yeah, and a huge inclusion in his deck, because, yeah. like I said, most people aren't running that these mm -hmm. days. It makes sense given how aggressive some decks have curved these days. It's not even necessarily the deck itself is super aggressive, it's just the mid range threat of outpacing Handlock because you're spending your early turns tapping. And the best plays that you often have before the turn four is always like, you know, either pass with nothing or like you, you play Ancient Watcher. So the Earth Ring Farseer fills out that curve. Speaking of which, I don't think we've actually seen any Ancient Watchers. Have to assume they're in here. Yeah, but I was just weird. thinking the same. How do you cut those? They seem so yeah. good for the hand look. It actually really doesn't even fe seem feasible, right? You just so wouldn't cut Ancient Watcher when you're like looking at I, it. I wouldn't. Yeah, it just seems so ridiculous. But if he has, uh, obviously it's heading up from this game. It's also important to note that the Earthen Ring Farseer came out to where, since Life Coach was on the coin, he could just play it organically on turn three and then still have the perfect turn four Mountain Giant. So he didn't have to just play something down to play something down. He got a good body, he got the heal, and he got to continue just basically surviving, draw more cards. Rope is burning. Life Coach is, uh, is known for his uh, uh, careful decision making. Yeah. That's the most diplomatic way I've ever heard that put. Now, one thing that I also didn't think about is not just siphon soling uh, a threat, but siphon soling a void caller <laughs> to pull out <laughs> wow. Doomguard or something if you need to do damage. Well, that's interesting. That's something that I didn't really consider. See, uh, Nice is, uh, is down to draw some cards. That's a lot of damage card on board. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, Whoa. that's the dream. That is absolutely the dream. That said, even though it's the dream, it's not as if uh, Nias is in like a particularly good spot right now. No, the he's about to enter the Molten Giant zone. Yep, Molten and, and Jaraxxus. Yeah, zero and mana Molten Giant. Oof. Plus, Life Coach is still yet to draw some of his taunt minions, um, so that is very good. Well, sorry, <laughs> Life <laughs> Coach. What have you done, Dad? Had <laughs> yet yeah. had yet to draw his taunt minions outside of that first Sun Fury, but that second Sun Fury is a very big deal. That's incredible, and this is probably the Siphon's whole turn, because he, he does want to heal up, but if he goes for the Charaxxus, this he cannot taunt, because mm -hmm. it would require 11 mana, and obviously he doesn't have that. So, Multi Giant, Sun Fury, maybe the Owl if he wants to do that as well, to get uh, rid of the second secret. Be very curious to see this list after the, after this series is over. Go take a look at like what he's cut because it's actually just bothering me now because I'm like, being like, what would you actually cut for some of these cards? Yeah, he had to cut something. Yeah. Siphon Soul is usually not there. Right, right. Earth Ring Farseer. Earth Ring Farseer is usually not there. So yeah. I wonder if he cut just what mana cost for mana cost instead of Emperor Thorson. He said, you know, I'm just gonna use Siphon Soul because Emperor is too slow. Given if I expect a lot of druids, I think no. Life Coach would not bring Handlock if he anticipated a lot of druids. Uh, double kill command would, would have, have been game. Yeah, it would have done it, but instead he draws the last freezing trap. Which quite, the original one is still there. Yeah, quite possibly the worst thing he could have drawn because he has the mad scientist out there as well, so he would have been able to get it with the with the mad scientist dead rattle anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, Life Coach has navigated this one extremely well. Yeah, we see. Nice really doesn't have anything to do at this point. He can it's, kill command it's phase. It's not over yet. Because if the Lord Jaraxxus gets pulled from the Void Caller, and That's true. Then, it's not then, a heal. Then, yeah, then Life Coach will be unable to heal. But Nias has to take out the Void Caller here and hope for the Jaraxxus. I mean, but he doesn't know it. But, but huh? he's wow. probably. I mean, he's, he's probably considering like what what he's heals doing. up the. This the has to be. Oh, oh wow! 
Okay, so that changes everything right there. Yeah, it does. It will. It can get bounced from the freezing trap, but again, the it's mana, a dead card. mana cost is going to be 11, it's which 10. is no yep. good. 15. Wait, no. Uh, oh, does he have oh. opportunity to lethal? No, so he does not. Freezing trap. Hmm. <laughs> Man, wow. if only Draxus was 8 mana and you attack with Draxus, bounce it back and play Draxus. It's 2 damage off yeah. lethal right now. So uh, Draxus is part of an elite minions. club of minions that, uh, once they get bounced by a freezing trap, are actually just unplayable because they become 11 mana. So unless you have like Emperor Thorsan or some kind of loophole like that, uh, you know, Jaraxxus, Alex Draza, those cards will just sit in your hand. Yep. And Life Coach here, he, he knows that it's a freezing trap or he, uh, so yeah, he knows because uh, Nias played the Hunter before and had no other trap. So, yep. Sun Fury, I guess, is the one that he wants to return to hand. Maybe he kills right. some more minions at all. Yeah, when, when he plays, when he attacks the Sun Fury, it actually makes Twilight Drake a little bit stronger. So you can have it slightly more resilient. Yeah. He could just go for the Doom God as well, right. just to make sure to have the lethal on the following turn. He doesn't really need the Drake or the Watcher, so why not Doom God? He does have one Ancient Watcher, we were talking about that. Just yeah. Real quick note. Yeah. Yeah. So he didn't cut Watcher. <laughs> and right. Neos needs a need second quick shot, A-burn. kill command. That's not that it. That is not going to do it. Yeah, that's going to be. It's going to be game one for Life Coach. Wow, an important win for Life Coach. As his handlock escapes the grasp of Hunter, which means that that handlock is no longer vulnerable to that freeze mage, which means in the long term, can Nias hold off against the, the lineup of Life Coach? Yeah, that was absolutely huge. If you, going up 1 0 is always great, but that was an, the, an important one. The handlock was the liability in his lineup, and now he, now he got the win with it, doesn't have to worry about it anymore. Good times. Yeah, it's uh, worth noting too that Life Coach is running Control Warrior, uh, which we've already seen. And Nice is running Freeze Mage, and we talked about earlier that that's one of those really bad matchups for Freeze Mage because of the armor generation of Warrior and the Mage's finite ability to deal damage. Uh, obviously, Arc Mage Antonis withstanding, but yeah. So, well, uh, I mean, it, it's it's not impossible. Definitely one of the matchups that got better with Black Brock Routen, but suffered a lot from the Grand Tournament. Not just. Uh, Jessica Trueheart and tank up, but also Bash being able to help gain a little bit of life and then stop the, the little flow of damage. Freeze Mage in general just struggles against Control Warrior. It's definitely gotten pretty bad. Against Druid these days, though, uh, is, it, is it better or worse? Is it, do you think Druid's just curved that much more aggressively So it, with the Darnassus Aspirin? So is that struggling as well, Uh, uh Freeze mean, uh, Mage against Freeze Druid. Freeze Mage against Druid. Well, Druid has always been very strong against Freeze Mage. Uh, probably a little bit. Uh, just the uh, consistency brought by Darnassus Aspirant helps in, uh, well, every single matchup. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I guess that's a really good point. You always want those mana crystals. Yeah. Then the warrior, uh, I'm trying to imagine a, a, wor a world where Nias can be able to defeat something with the Freeze Mage, but then we look past it and look at Druid and Hunter versus, you know, Druid and Warrior, for example. Um, and I feel like that's definitely winnable. It's definitely winnable. So the, the big question mark that exists in this match specifically is how that freeze mage interacts and it's surprising because you know we haven't seen freeze mage in a while is it just because of the patron warrior and how its state in the meta game has brought back freeze mage mostly that because it is horrible against the warrior freeze mage has limited amount of damage yes sometimes with antonidas you, you can get some extra but all those armor ups all the removal it's just uh, you can't really deal that 50 damage so easily. So the patrons used to be a thing. There's a little bit less armoring up in the patrons than there is in control, but still the hero power lines up poorly for in, uh, for the freeze mage. And now with the patron nerfed, I think that's one of the reasons why we are seeing all these freeze mages make a comeback because they're, the players are expecting to see less warrior. That and at the same time, you know, when you're looking for a deck that's very good against uh, a lot of aggro decks, I actually think freeze mage is just bar none better against aggro decks than handlock in most situations, at least with the popular aggro decks that are floating around right now. So I think that's kind of the deck you want to bring if you're expecting to see those heavy sure. aggro decks. So yeah. I, I think that in the combination with, as you said, the, the Grim Patron change made Yester a lot friendlier. Yesterday we saw both Ostkaka and Thais win their matches and they, in their interviews they were talking about how they were targeting aggressive decks with their Patron and Freeze Mage lineup. Both of those decks are some of the best against the aggressive strategies. Yeah, you know, that Patron deck is very surprising because it used to be very good against aggro based off of the Whirlwinds, right? Dealing damage to every single minion. Uh, by doing so, you'd be able to clear the board constantly. And Patron still has that. They just lose their 72 damage possibilities uh, as the game drags on. Um, but as a result, they played more board centric, so they're still very dynamic. They can still rebound in health with armor smiths, get those whirlwinds. I personally kind of like the patron still, but 
I, I'm always very hesitant to say that I think it's back. I think it's definitely something that you have to be careful of. I don't know what you think, Robert. Do you think Patron is back at all? I think it depends on who you ask. I think it has, obviously, good matchups. The Having cards like Unstable Ghoul, having cards like Whirlwind, very great against aggro and a lot of these kind of weenie rush decks that have, like, one-health minions. Uh, I know if you ask Zixo... Weenie one-health minions. If you ask Zixo, we I'm pretty sure Zixo... too, Rob. I was trying to get past that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm sorry. I'm Even sorry. Even Magma Rager has feelings, Rob. I apologize to Magma Rager and to other One Health minions, but. but not Ice Rager. Uh, He's no. just sitting pretty. He has two. He's fine. He's cool and pretty. Right. But uh, if you ask uh, you know, uh, certain players, obviously Oskaka feels very strongly as well. Zixo continues to say that this is like a, a number one deck. Uh, I don't know how serious he's being, Zixo. It's hard to tell. But uh, yeah, there are players who still believe it's a top tier deck. I just I don't think it is, uh, but I haven't I, I haven't honestly seen it enough, and I haven't played it enough as well. So mm -hmm. it's hard to evaluate kind of until we see. It'll be interesting to see uh, Oskaka and Taiji's next matchup since they're both running it. And we've only obviously seen it twice in this tournament thus far. So you're not convinced. I, I remain unconvinced. Okay, and, and you're not alone. You know, I talked to a few other players. You know, Purple, for example, was watching and he's just like, no, I don't think it's any good. <laughs> but of course, the results speak for themselves. Maybe the Warriors <laughs> with the win. <laughs> Can be the one with the final say. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Life Coach is not going to go with War. He's going to save it. Go with Druid instead. Try to get that win because he knows it's more susceptible um, to the to Freeze Mage than Warrior is. And that is a pretty interesting set of opening hands from both players yeah, here. Both players, excellent hands. Oh, that inner weight on top of everything. Life Coach has Wild Crow has the Aspirant. He's, he might leave him to watch the Wild Crow just to make sure to get the Shredder on turn three. And yeah, very balanced hands, actually, um, in terms of mana ramp. I think Life Coach having the Shredder is generally a little bit better mm -hmm. to start out. Uh, Shade, very good in its own right. But I think Shredder, when you're going right to turn four, generally, mm -hmm. is a little better. Mm -hmm. Quite powerful. Nias, on the other hand, he has the option to innervate the Shade of Naxxramas on turn one. And uh, the opponent, Druid, has no way to clear it off early on. One of the ways to deal with it would be something like Sylvanas Windrunner, but it's not even that common. We've only seen one player in the, in the tournament play that card. Yeah, it was mentioned that uh, Shade, for a long time, was kind of just the default three drop you had as a druid. Uh, and it's kind of fallen off a little bit lately, but Nias, being the, the kind of innovator he is, uh, <laughs> he's always down, <laughs> so he's, yeah, uh, always down to, to kind of bring the, the cards he feels works best. And he's obviously very high on Shade of Nactramus. And in this matchup, it can be huge because the druid has no inherent way to just deal with a stealth minion that's getting bigger and bigger. And they can just sit on the board until you're ready to Savage Roar, until you're ready to bring up the full combo. Life could still roping on turn one and ends up innervating and Darnassus Asper. That is so interesting. Yeah, it is. It's I, because I, I think he wants it. to be able to answer his opponent's Darnassus Asper ahead of time. Yep. Because I was thinking about, like, would you innervate Shredder if you see the Darnassus Asper being played? But he says, you know what, I want to get ahead of that Asper. The shade is going to work out pretty well for him here, though. Yeah, the shade absolutely amazing for for Nias. Oh, swipe the from swipe the, top. the top. That is a uh, that's a pretty good draw. Yeah. That's a huge deal because now Nias doesn't have a minion to play unless he, has no, he has misses nothing. It. Yeah, he can hero power or savage throw phase. Going out to swipe, but <laughs> I yeah, feel like he'll I hold like the, the savage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not only that, he killed the shade too, so he's not even getting that excessive damage. And Life Coach takes initiative on the board. He is down on the resource count, but you know, with Savage Roar in both players' hands, Ooh. if they find an opportunity to become aggressive, they will. Drew to the Claw is a really good response to this. Uh, it's one of the, the few ma minions that I think Shredder, at this point in the game, kind of has trouble dealing with. Yes, yeah, certainly. Life Coach can extend the trade with the Keeper of the Grove. There's that Ragnaros we saw it. yesterday. Yeah, not the greatest Keeper in the world, but it gets the job done. That Ragnaros, if, if Life Coach gets to play, then Nias does not pick up a big game Hunter. The Rag might just win the game alone. Yeah. Uh, the Ragnaros is an extremely powerful card. Uh, obviously, one we saw more kind of uh, in prior metas, but in its own right, you just put it in there and it does a lot of stuff. Yeah, so Ragnaros, um, just because there's so many other. Oh my goodness, Emperor Thor is off the top. That's really nice because, again, it's a 5-5 minion that gets answered, but it's like he had a minion to play on curve. He had nothing to do that yeah, turn otherwise. Yeah, absolutely nothing. If he draw a spell there, he, he cannot play anything. He could have wrought for 7 mana, I suppose, but <laughs> you'd rather play yes. the Emperor for sure. He's thinking about, uh, nice thing about the Drake, he would be able to play a spell-powered Living Roots. Well, that's not too bad. Uh, he can take out that uh, Drog. It's quite annoying, so... I I would expect him to go yeah. for that. Say no to Trogs. <laughs> Trog, Trog knows stupid. Stay in school, kids. <laughs> I kind of feel like the Trog sometimes when I'm up here doing math. I'm like, Trog knows stupid. 
I, I, I sympathize <laughs> with the Trump. Definitely not as stupid as that joke I just made. <laughs> no, no, that was good. Yeah, I mean, you guys can't see it, uh, but Savi's just cracking up over here. <laughs> oh, what goodness. Say no to drugs. There you have it. There you have it, and down it goes. Also trading for that, for that low tap. And now life coach with that Ragnaros is going to take control of this game. Oh, by fire be purged. It is yeah. time. He can kill it. Assuming the Drake survives. No. Okay. Does survive. But it puts him in it puts him at sub 14 health yeah. now, so he will spend the rest of his game living in fear. Yep. And that's why while it helps clearing the Ragnaros, he can't really Pepper, no. play anything strong. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Naya's list is very interesting. We saw the double living roots. Oh, that's a miss. Mm. Yeah, he, he, certainly, missed, he yeah. missed one damage on everything. Uh oh. Yeah. He He's certainly should have uh, swiped before trading off the Azure Drake for that extra spell power uh -oh. to deal one more damage to the Keeper and to his opponent's face. Yeah, you so can tell Nice is rushing a little bit based off of frustration. And the second Wrath is awkward. You don't, you'd rather just have something to play. It's worth noting, uh, earlier today we saw Nice has two copies of Living Roots, he has Druid of the Saber, and now we see Lepernome. Yeah. Uh, obviously, terrible board state here for Nias to be in. I wouldn't be surprised if he had, um, you know, just ripped a Fel Reaver off the top, but it's almost too little too late. Like, at this point, he's just stemming bleeding, and he needs more than that. He just concedes life coaches up 2-0 with his warrior remaining as his last deck. Yeah, and he, uh, a little bit rushing it there. It didn't matter in the end whether, mm -hmm. whether he swipes first or second, but it might signal something about the mind has, mindset that he's in right now. He might be a little bit... He's, he's one game off from getting eliminated from the World Championships, and it might be playing a, a role in his uh, in, in this match right now. He needs to calm himself down and really focus. He can still do it. Well, Life Coach looks definitely better than Nias did. Yesterday, there were some comments made. I don't remember if we were casting it together or I was with uh, Amaz. Or maybe I think Robbie were there too, but Life Coach definitely looked um, uncomfortable during yeah. some of his games. He was more stressed. He was... Uh, definitely more tense, but now he looks more relaxed. He even smiled a little bit when the camera got really close in, and Life Coach noticed that he was it's like, "Oh yeah, that's right. I am. Uh, I'm on camera a little bit." So. We simply must smile. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. For Nice, though, I mean, we, we've talked about it. this has been a really hectic past, you know, week for him. He just had a daughter. You know, it's obviously taking care of a kid, very full time activity. So that's right. Maybe getting a little less sleep, but yeah, I, I agree that he needs to just take this game, try to kind of calm down, get back into his game, which is very high level plays. You know, don't rush the plays. He's he takes about as much time as Life Coach in a lot of his turns, but that's fine. That's what it's there for. Just, you know, kind of calm down and get back into his game. Right. It's never over till it's over. And Druid, Druid versus Warrior is a great way yep. for Nice to get it's back into the series. Yep. Some players have been saying that, the, oh. that, that, that the new version of the of the Warrior does a lot better than the old ones did. Because now you have the just you have Bash, especially. Bash helps a lot. You can deal with an Aspirant. You can deal with the Pilot Shredder, even if you don't happen to draw a weapon. Mm -hmm. And it does help you just pair things much better with removal, right? Shield Slam has more activators to oh, yeah. help make it relevant. And then you just have an ability to fight back. The longer the game goes for the warrior side, generally speaking, it does better than the Druid, but there are ways for Druid to really push in the pressure as well. And it usually requires early game ramp, which has no sight. Like, I don't see it at all in Nias's hand. Yeah, that's a really rough hand from Nias. He might still be able to pick up something like a like that, an Aspirant or a Wild Crow to help out, but he certainly does need some help with this. And if he ends up hero powering on turn two and three, he's going to be playing from behind for a long time. And that's okay for Life Coach that he doesn't have a play either. It's one of these things where, you know, as the warrior, if the Druid passes, you're, you're okay with passing. Versus if they're playing minions, that's when you're worried about passing. Yeah. Oh, that shade helps a little bit. This turn, still only hero power available. Not that great, but the shade, very important. Yeah, shade, uh, you know, not necessarily as powerful in the against warrior as it is uh, as against druid, because brawl uh, will ultimately probably at some point get rid of that shade. So as the druid player, you kind of have to walk this tightrope of is when is the right time to attack with the shade? Uh, do I want to really play into brawl? Is that something I'm concerned about? Do I just want to try to get like three or four damage in early? Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, you don't want it to get removed too easily, but Warrior single target removal suite is probably what? the best in no. the game. So it's, when you actually unveil that shade, it's probably just going to get removed. Yeah, quite often you want to hide it behind something like a uh, like Druid of the Claw in, in taunt form or a Sludge Belcher, and then that might be the time to strike. You, you can maybe take out your opponent's Belchers front half and still keep the shade around. If it gets executed after that, sure, it already got its job done. Right, and obviously it's just there against the Warrior to press in some damage, mm -hmm. get you closer to combo range, and. You know, uh, Nias' hand is a little bit slower 
obviously, but I think it's worth pointing out that Druid is not working from the same wind condition that something like maybe Zoo or Face Hunter is. It has a longer window uh, to where it can start doing more. That said, Nice has a couple of early game cards in, hand, or in his deck, so he had to cut other stuff, and I don't know if we've seen like Emperor Thorsan, which is usually very big for Druids. I don't know. Yeah, that, could, uh, that could ultimately hurt Amir. Life Coach again there, are carefully considering all of his options. Just pre-equipping the Fiery War Axe there also could have been viable, but I believe because of the Cruel Task Master to follow the Acolyte, yes, he like chooses to, to play this first. He knows his opponent doesn't have access to the coin, so yeah. he says there's no way for him to silence it outside of a surprise Iron Beak Owl. Um, and, you know, so he takes this opportunity to draw a card, and that's extremely valuable. Use, it's basically trading a coin for drawing a card. And in this case, he's also even to load up the power on board, so that way he can answer other minions with the Fiery War Axe. All of a sudden, Fiery War Axe, a card that normally doesn't see too much value outside of those minions you mentioned, the Shredder and the Aspirin, will because there's five power and you can distribute accordingly. Yep, even though those all, those uh, two minions might not look all that threatening, they are still uh, some, not something that uh, the Druid player could ignore. He has to make a weaker play. <laughs> yeah. Like, Shredder is the better play most of the time. Imagine if he didn't do anything and he was just playing Accolade the previous turn and then he plays Shredder. It would have been a, a thing where he developed more power on the board and had more ability to leverage that as the drops Lothep, etc. Life Coach, picking up an armor smith here, that's actually fairly decent because he wanted to play the Fire War Axe anyway, so now he gets to, gets good use out of the remaining two mana. Yeah, I kind of wonder if there was a world where Nyash just wanted to actually do the two damage to the Acolyte and just get it off the board. Obviously, it's very weak as a 1-2 that doesn't draw cards, but it's still a minion on the board. Obviously, electing to value the warrior card draw more and, and respect it. Yeah, I think it's a it's a really close call. I wouldn't have blamed him for uh, for doing that. Well, this is a time where I think you can unveil the shade because you just played Lotheb, so removal options are harder for your opponent. But then the drawback is that there's a fiery war axe waiting. However, I mean Lotheb will also be dealt with at the same time too. So, yep. so kind of with this play, with this attack, the fiery war axe has to make a decision here, <laughs> whether he wants to kill the Lotheb or. The, the Fiery War Axe has decided to kill the Shade. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mind of its own, that Fiery War Axe. Absolutely. Man. Yeah. Uh, off the top, Acolyte of Pain for Life Coach, which is the only thing he could play because of Lothab and then the, the two six drops. I like seeing both Sylvanas and Jessicar Trueheart. Um, you know, they both very powerful six drops, and mm -hmm. generally in decks you tend to see one or the other, I feel like. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, to see them both is, is good. And Although it feels a little bit greedier, maybe letting you know this is kind of a even slower control warrior. Yeah, I think it's fine ultimately because both are extremely flexible. As the game develops in slower matchups, holding on to Sylvanas is okay. In faster matchups, Sylvanas forces your opponent to trade onto the board. And then just a car, as everyone knows, you can definitely play on curve, um, or you can choose to hero power, play just a car, and hero power again and gain six life in one turn while developing the 6-3 with long-term uh, long implications of how the game turns out from that point on. Yeah, that's quite powerful, but for now it seems a bit slow. It can get a little bit punished by, uh, by some oh, cheap, no. cheap Intervate! Oh, no, man. Life Coach is actually just drawing straight into his, uh, his legendary minions. He's drawn like four of them in a row now, yes. when obviously he would like to see something maybe like a Death Bite, a Shield Slam. Uh, yeah, he has the execute, but he had no activator. So on that turn, if he'd played down Sylvanas, Lothab would have just traded and he wouldn't have gotten a very good Sylvanas. Yeah. Uh, and he just ultimately decides to you know, put down the Jeskar Trueheart, activate the better hero power. Yep. As nice as it is for Life Coach to upgrade the hero power here, because of how, how easy it is to remove that three toughness minion, Nias will pull further ahead on the board. Yeah, and it might not be uh, too far off before we see a brawl coming in here. Obviously, you want to do it right now with only two minions on the board, but, I mean, he's at 16 health right now, right? And, you know, Nias will be on eight mana, so it's not nine, so it's not necessarily that dire. But maybe in the next turn we start seeing that brawl. Yeah. It kind of is, though, because Drew the Claw plus Savage War is, is, is a lot like, of damage. In, it's like a double Savage War, <laughs> if you think about it, because <laughs> all these minions already start at the Savage War damage. On the plus side, uh, Life Coach has gained nine health. Just She'll is, block is tank it, up. Well, it's easy enough for it's now, 21. I believe. One, eight, uh, damage, I believe. 21, yes. Yeah. Uh, and Nice has to wonder if he's possibly playing into a brawl. That's that he may not have much of a choice because Do that... Do you care? Like, you don't just don't draw out here. Just play play the Druid of the Claw, Judge Phase, play the Leper Gnome, Hero Power. You know, oh, yeah, even so if there's nice. a brawl, right, the, warrior the, combo will, coming yeah, the Warrior will only have three mana remaining after that. And uh, I don't think that's going to be enough to save him. 
I'd probably drop the Leper Gnome too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just drop the Leper Gnome. Maybe maybe throw the Hero Power in. I don't know that you need to play down the Aspirant. Yeah. Uh, there could be a case made in favor of keeping the Leper Gnome as well, because the Brawl is something that the Warrior just has to have. And by playing the Leper Gnome, it's possible you have a like a, an additional bad result out of that. Yeah, that's true. You see that sometimes oh, as a Paladin no. player where you just don't Hero Power because you don't want to run the oh, risk yeah. of the 1-1 the one -one surviving, but yeah, he, he figures, as you said, it has to yeah, be Brawl. The, the combo still... Yeah, I mean, even if there is a Brawl, the combo will still be enough to end the game. Right, and the Shredder... Should be to do it. Shredder being sticky, and I, I think for Life Coach, uh, drawing into all those really powerful Legendary minions, you know, he needed more answers than he needed more Legendary minions. Yep, Life Coach hoping for a nice result from the Brawl, but... Uh, well, I mean... Uh, it doesn't really matter. We know better. Right. There is 14 damage waiting in Nias's hand. Yeah, so Nias is, uh, is going to be able to... Well... No, <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage coming Ah, out of sweet direction. pirate justice. Yar. Right. So, game number three. Uh, Nias picks his best matchup by a mile, but it's going to be tough. The road to coming back here begins with Druid, but it ends on Freeze Mage. That's a train stop that I don't want to ever get to if I'm in Nias' position. You, uh, you wish you could go somewhere else. Somewhere uh, else. Yeah, a detour, if you will. Right. Yes. Uh, I wonder what the statistics are, and I, I feel like I should have access to this, of how many times the, the one-eyed cheat has been the deciding card. Obviously, it was the combo, but one-eyed cheat I'll did actually you, get to do damage. one time, <laughs> and it was not that time we just witnessed. It was, uh, it, was, it was one time in a tournament where it was like someone played Blackwing Corruptor, and it was like they would barely survive, and then... The when I cheat came out and then just had enough damage to kill and stuff like that. So right. it was really really intense. Have you seen it they, with the, with the rogue when it pops out of the trailer? Then you just salty <laughs> deck <laughs> yeah, at the like core, salty you deck from that point again. On. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, I haven't actually seen that happen, but um, that that's that's really amusing. That yeah, could it's, happen. It's kind of rare though. That's pretty yeah. much the only pirate that we see in competitive play. Is that when we see shady dealer come out as a uh, five four? Is that what happens? Yeah, I mean mm. one out of seven. Did, Two or how many two chops there are, you might get some use out of it. Sure. And uh, Nias is going to go. He against. says, you know what? Let's get it over with. Yeah. Yeah. This has to happen. Freeze Mage versus Control Warrior. But if he wins this one, I mean, he must be feeling like Cloud9 after that because he's like, I definitely can win this series. Which is awkward because he just joined Team Hearthlytics. Yeah. yeah. Ah, Touche. There we go. Touche. That was a bad pun, too. Now we're even on bad puns. Ribbit, ribbit. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's actually discuss uh, ways in which. The Freeze Mage can win this matchup. I think the big card is probably Emperor Thorisan to get the discounted spells oh, yeah. and try to get a lot of burn yeah. in hand. And the Nidus and yep. the Emperor Thorisan. Well, uh, free Ice Lances with the, the Archmage and Nidus. Yep. So you can just, you can approximate and just bump up percentages up and down based off of the, what the cards you see in hand. So first of all, the fact that Nidus has his Archmage and Nidus early on is great. Now if it he is. picks up Emperor Thorisan, he actually has stuff to do. The second yeah. thing is he actually has a coin. And that's yeah. also beneficial too. Coin means an extra help. card and extra fireball if you can hold on to it and convert that. Yeah, what you really want to do is, or what you have to do is, when you play the Ember, it's just like Archmage and Nidus and as many Frost Bolts and Ice Lances as possible. That's right, that's right. Now, there's also another school of thought for the Warrior. Instead of um, being really defensive, there are opportunities, or sorry, instead of being really aggressive, you can just simply press armor up as much as possible. And then, hypothetically, Freeze Mage should just run out of damage because. You have infinite amount of life gain, and they have a certain amount that they can only do. And there's usually a magic number, like 55 to 60. If you can get to that amount of effective health throughout the entire game process, you should win. Right, and obviously the win condition for Freeze Mage, generally speaking, in a situation like this, is you want the Oxtraza to come down, you want to be able to target it on the opponent's face, which we actually haven't seen at all this turn. It's all been Alex Drawsing themselves back up to 15, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, so you want to do right. that, and then you want to just burst them down with something like Blood Mage Thalnos into discounted Fireballs and Ice Lances and Frost Bolts. Yeah. From the Warrior's point of view, sometimes you want to take more an aggressive approach and not go for the fatigue. When you when you uh, have have a nice curve, maybe if, if your version no. of Warrior is playing Pilot Destroyer, you can play that out early. Play as many minions as you can. Try to force the mage into using single target removal on your minions. But with this type of hand, I would expect Life Coach just to go for pretty much fatigue and, right, and uh, run Nias out of uh, out of damage. So I like the fact that uh, if we look at Nias's hand right now, he could do something like turn seven, coin, ice lance, and then he does immediately get two fireballs. Obviously, that ice lance is not going to do damage. But wow, oh, this is very important. Those are actually good cards. I mean, they don't look that spectacular. 
But with that Archmage and Donidas, after the Emperor, so it might be exactly what Donidas wants to have. This is also very important that Nias has these minions out to just keep dealing chip damage. You just can't let the armor get out of hand. You just keep doing a little bit of damage, and it's even better for uh, Nias if Life Coach has to start using weapons to remove them. Because mm -hmm. again, you're just taking little bits of damage, but they add up really quickly. Right, yep. Oh, can you like that is that's, a, that's, that's good. potentially good the best well. possible draw for, for Nias. Nias, Nias really needed that uh, the last time he played Freeze Mage to have the Arcane Elects in the top half of his deck. Obviously, they were like the bottom three cards. Yeah. Uh, would you be willing? Would you? Want to cash in the Mad Scientist at all, just because you want to reduce the chance of your of drawing a secret? Because it feels like right now you're you're desperate to get to Emperor Thor, so that's like the big key here. Well, thankfully, Life Coach made the decision for him. Yeah, so that kind of worked out, and he didn't draw a secret with that Arcane Intellect, but it definitely was an option. And uh, now, right right now, Nias is uh, one Emperor or from having quite an amazing. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be insane. He's a yeah. Frostbolt. Two Ice Lances, coin. coin. I remember Four the fire. only time I've seen this matchup yeah. go in the favor of the Mage was at the Legendary <laughs> wow. was at Legendary Series. Oh my gosh, a Brawl and a Doomsayer. Uh, no! I've got some figures that this probably <laughs> nope. not going to be any The end use, is still but, coming. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You'd rather key hold on to his Shield Slams for other threats like the Antonitis. So this, this is an interesting play because with those like he has two shield slams, two executes. I don't know if he really needed to risk that because he has so much removal. But yeah, if it worked out, that would have been a very well used brawl considering the matchup. He's uh, really scared about the acolyte forcing him to overdraw. Right, and he's at he's at a point where realistically, if Alex Straza or Emperor Thorsen get overdrawn, he is in a really bad way. That he instantly true. loses because he can't actually deal enough damage or pressure otherwise. <laughs> Might so, just be worth throwing away a blizzard. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that would be a bad play. But, right. Uh, the Acolyte, while risky, it might be a tiny bit stronger. Yeah, he doesn't even ping it, mm -hmm. which is fine. I mean, but there are ways for him to, like, generally speaking, if the, the warrior had, like, cool Taskmaster again and did and something, weapon, then unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Having already seen the one cool Taskmaster, though, and I feel like it's okay. It's a reasonably safe play to make. Um, it's not like Whirlwind's being running Control Warrior anymore these days. So you're not expecting that. You're not expecting revenge. Mm -hmm. uh, so you probably feel a little bit safe about this. And I don't know, if he doesn't draw anything useful next turn, it might be time to start throwing out those Blizzards. Yeah, I think he has to. And uh, if he doesn't pick up Emperor, he can still go for the, for the Antonidas, Coin, Frostbolt, Icelands, Icelands on turn 10 to get to those precious fireballs. Yeah. And uh, Life Coach has a bunch of removal, but it really what doesn't do him no. all that much good. No, not really. The Sludge Belcher could come down, and I think Life Coach basically understands that any minions he plays down are just going to get frozen for uh, a certain number of turns or just get removed by Flame Strike. So right. he still has to yep. play them. Yeah. That Belcher is not going to really get any better. Ooh. Can't, can't Arcane, Intellect. Arcane Intellect, though. Yeah, it's a huge problem that he has so many cards right now. He's got to start dumping the cards. Yep, nine cards in his hand right now. After the Ergolite dies, he will have a full hand. Right. He'll buy oh, <laughs> just nothing. Yeah. Yeah, what a chess blizzard. match. Well, uh, you know, the fact that he still hasn't had the Thorsen, that was a good turn to drop it again. Surprised he pinged the Sludge Belcher there. I, I think for him, it's he wants to ping it again and play something like maybe second Blizzard if he needs to stall. This Yasera, by the way, is probably not going to die for a long time. And almost any card that comes out from Yasera is generally is... pretty good. Okay. Have to expect a shield block. Yeah. Um, you don't really expect Doomsayer to survive. Like, yeah. surely by now, it's Owl, just yeah. gonna, yeah, it, it's, it's just in case his opponent didn't have it, but... A little bit of a, a, little bit of a check, just to make sure, keep him honest. But it's still definitely the play in this spot, like, even if we it doesn't to dump go... It anyway. oh, oh my just goodness. Or, That's bad. That's that could be Life huge. Coach's ticket to the runner-up match. I mean, the Jessica True Heart is so powerful. Not to mention, by the way, like Life Coach also has ridiculous opportunities to gain life if um, he gets Dream, because then you can Shield Maiden Dream it. Shield Maiden Dream. Yeah. Oh, that actually, my eyes started dream. twitching just thinking about like, <laughs> no, too much HP. Well, I come through the Cran Thorn. Here we go. Yeah. Dead mana. He can't really afford to wait any longer. No, he cannot. All right, so Frostbolt. Ice Lance, Coin Ice Lance, he's gotten 24 damage, meanwhile dealing 11. Yep, effectively getting rid of all that armor. It took him a little bit longer than he would have preferred to because of because he did not draw, the, oh he didn't remove all the armor, yeah. but almost all the armor. But it took him a little bit longer than he would have liked to because he would have preferred to find that turn. Emperor.
makes sense. And Life Coach is just on the gain a bunch of armor every turn plan. Do you yep. think um, there's any room for Freeze Mage just to run duplicate, or is that just way too greedy? Well, some players have done it in the past, and uh, Stan Sifka especially has had a lot of a lot of success with his uh, double duplicate Freeze Mage list. Double duplicate? Yeah, oh no goodness. Alex Raza. He actually won a tournament. Look a at all these Laughing Sisters. Life yeah, Coach is right. three for three on Laughing Sisters. <laughs> One for each <laughs> caster. Right? <laughs> well, you, buy, you might as well get started with your fireballs. Yeah. No time like the present. And the thing is, it shaves off the armor perfectly, which is great, because if you draw Alex Straza, that is enough time for you to, or enough room for you to go extra damage there and not waste it. But is he going to be in danger of dying? I feel like he kind of is. He's taking enough yeah, damage. Next turn, the, the block's going to get popped. Yep. He does want to armor up and also set up weapons so that way it's like he's used all of his freezes. So most likely weapon will be able to generate six damage. Yeah. That, that probably yeah. isn't any reason not to play one of those uh, laughing sisters. Oh the belts are. You could, could even play. both laughing yeah, sisters. You could even play both. There's still gonna be room for another shield meta if he, if he draws that. Maybe in his opinion he needs space on the board for something. Oh nightmare. Yeah. All right, so his yeah, second ice block, place, which but... is good. Really needs uh I feel like he needed Thor Sand though. Yeah, he still can hit it if he goes into the Arcane Intellect. I think he's calculating, like, can I survive if I play Ice Barrier? I probably need Frost Nova. Yeah, he has to go for the Arcane Intellect here. That burn is not going to be enough because of the Justicar. He has to find the Alex Straza. He's also just kind of losing the race right now. Yeah. He, I mean, he has 34 damage wow. right here. And that's it. Nias is officially done, and Life Coach is going to take the series 3-1. to one. That's right. A moment of relief for Life Coach. The moment of sadness for our American player. He has not been able to win a series, but what a journey it's been for Nias. Moments before he was uh, able to come up, he told me he felt pretty good about it, and ultimately he just played his heart out. There were a couple of missteps here and there, but he told me like he was just happy to be here, and that's something that you can't deny him of. Yeah, this, uh, this his whole storyline in 2015, he kind of came up as a player who just barely qualified for last call, made it in, made it to the round of 40, mm -hmm. and then came all the way to the America's Championship, finished top four, got to the Hearthstone World Championship, which is an incredible story for someone who is absolutely under the radar, yep. relatively unknown, and had, you know, kind of interest and in, in a lot of his time put into other things, and this was just a hobby. Yeah. It ended up really paying out for him. Yeah, uh, Nias had a grand total of two points yeah. for the Hearthstone World Championship, about equivalent to my IQ. So it's, it's very impressive for him to be able to climb all the way here to BlizzCon for a round of 16 in the entire world. Uh, so this is a, a fantastic achievement and he should definitely be proud of it. Yeah, really cool to see him make it this far, even though it's unfortunate for him that he's now out, but still, he had a good run. He brought, he brought his own unique decks. He, he put a little bit of twist into his Druid deck and yeah. uh, kind of, it kind of was working out to some parts, but uh, eventually didn't work out. All right, definitely. But uh, you know, we don't want to talk too much about Nias because in the end, uh, the victor is life coach and he stays alive in the tournament to live another day. Let's go over to Rachel. She's waiting with life coach. Let's hear what they have to say. Thank you so much, Dan. I am here with life coach and life coach. I feel like everyone can tune into the game at any point during the game and tell how well you're doing just based on how much your face is covered. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm really like, I mean, the games are intense and I'm really like, uh, it's also emotional for me, of course, yeah, so. Well, what emotion are you feeling right now? Um, yeah, that, that, well, actually that was a very good victory, but um, yeah, it's like, um, I think the very difficult part will come like in two days, like for the, for the decision matches. I mean, not saying that Nias was not a strong opponent, but it's like um, he, his lineup was not really suitable for mine, so I, I thought I would probably win. Well, tell me a little bit about the thought process that goes into picking your lineup. It's not just choosing three decks, but it's also choosing what order to play them in. Um, yeah, well, actually, probably the building is more important than the pick order. Like, I think the pick order, I mean, it's not completely random, but it's pretty much not that um, influential. Whereas, like, what decks you bring, of course, is very, very important. And uh, tell me, is there one in particular that you're really feeling confident about, one of the decks you brought? Um, well, it's just about the lineup, and like if it faces a lineup which is beneficial, then I'm very happy. For example, now, and against uh, his lineup, and um, I think to my like in two days it will be very, very difficult for me. So I really hope I can squeeze in the wins because I I don't think I'm favorite or something like that. But 
We shall see. I'll be cheering for you, of course, as always, as your many fans in chat. So thank you so much for talking to us, and I'm going to give it back to the casters. Thank you very much, Rachel. And a couple of words with Life Coach shows uh, that he's in high spirits. You know, he feels very good about his lineup. And that's the most important thing about Conquest. It's definitely not about one individual deck's performance necessarily. It's about how it works in the grand scheme of the big picture of your lineup. And I, I have to say, you know, if he feels good about his lineup, then I'm happy for him because I think he's the only player here in this top 16 to bring handlock. Is that correct? I think that's the case. We have seen all the players play. And uh, the other Warlocks were Zoo. Yep. He's, uh, he's also running probably, uh, that we've seen so far, the least aggressive lineup. Uh, not really buying into the aggro hype, sticking to what he knows, which is uh, those very uh, methodical control-oriented decks. So, as you said, if he feels comfortable with his lineup, that's comfort picks are, are a huge boon in tournament play. That's right. And with that win, Life Coach lives to day number four, which is going to be the runner-up matches. Tomorrow we'll be playing the winner's matches. Uh, featuring some of the players that you saw on day number one taking that victory. Thank you so much for everyone tuning in. I know a lot of people were happy that Life Coach won. Make sure to stay engaged in social media by hashtagging HWC 2015. And while you're on social media, please thank our sponsors that helped make this all happen, which you've been seeing throughout the entire broadcast. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have more action here in the Hearthstone World Championships. But before we go, we want to show you some of the highlights from the previous series brought to you by Windows 10 Game DVR.